and welcome back to Dominions 6. If you watched my previous videos where I played Dominions 5, you'll know I'm not the best at this game, but I really enjoy playing it. So I bought Dominion 6, you know, it's still pretty new at this point, and I joined, as you've probably seen by the title, an early age game as Ubar. Now, I do want to say that my previous videos were on the Warhammer mod specifically for Dominion 5. That mod is being ported over to Dominion 6. It's actually playable right now, but uh, it is still in that turnover process. Specifically, one of the big new things of Dominion 6 is like a mount system where a knight and their horse like become two separate entities if like one or the other dies. So if a knight, for example, on his horse dies, then the horse becomes its own entity and it can like kick and you know bite and then run off. Pretty cool change, I think. And the Warhammer mod is in the middle of sort of adding that to all the nations within it. I really love that mod. I can't wait until that is all finished and I will probably spin up a game for that once that's ready. Maybe not so soon since I'll be playing this probably for the next month or so, but still, huge credit to Somber or Sombre who makes that mod and he's an absolute champion. So, no longer talking about the mod, let's talk about what we're doing right now. I will show you what my god is. So we are Ubar, the kingdom of the unseen, sort of like a desert warrior, jinn genies, ghouls sort of uh, nation. A lot of cool spread. Specifically their lore is really cool because they thought they were hot shit in the city of Brass and they rebelled against the Pantocrator. And the Pantocrator was like, haha, really funny, nice try. And he sealed the Pretender and the City of Brass away, locked it away. Now the Pantocrator's gone and everybody's, you know, hustling for uh, the throne. And the, you know, the Pretender that was locked away in the City of Brass, he's ready to jump out and take his throne. So what that means gameplay-wise is you cannot take an Awake Pretender with this nation. And as, alongside that, these three sites uh, do not show up at the start of the game. It's the City of Brass, Jenna, and the Vault of Incense and Marvels. They are locked away until, well, until your Pretender is awake. Specifically, you know, you can only be dormant or imprisoned. I don't know if your Pretender, if your Pretender is prison, if the sites will open up in like the dormant stage. I think it's directly tied to your Pretender because it's supposed to be him like breaking out, but I'm not 100% on that. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail with how this nation works because I don't really know the specifics. You know, I'm not too good at this game, but I really like this nation. I've been real passionate about it. I've played a lot of single player games and, uh, you know, a few versus and co-op games with one of my friends and, uh, Ubar slash Middle Age Naba really uh, really caught my attention. So I joined a multiplayer game as Ubar and we will see how we do. Let me just go over a few quick things that I think are cool in this nation. Maybe not everything. Uh, the Ubarin Sheikah, sorry, Ubarin Sheik, as well as the Ubarin Camel Riders, they can be recruited outside of forts completely. You don't need. Uh, fortress to recruit these you can just recruit them straight off plains grasslands forests, wherever and specifically they have they all have stealthy pillager and i think just the commander has tax collector yeah which means i can make a huge horde of them from my non-fort locations while i'm building actual units of forts pile them all together sneak them behind enemy lines and then pillage It'll be pretty nice if that does come to fruition. I'd like to try it, but you know, I might not have enough money at the time, or other things could happen, you never know. But they're pretty nice little uh, raiding force you can put together. Uh, another neat thing, if you mouse over the picture here, you notice it says has one falcon at the side at the start of each battle. That is for each camel rider, and the commander has one D3. Now these falcons are basically, they're really weak units, but they respawn every battle, you know, Full health when they die you don't really lose anything so if you get a big enough horde of camel riders right when the battle starts you know 30 falcons will fly over and jump on the enemy force 
they're not the strongest, they'll probably get cleaned up almost immediately, but it can hold those units in place that you can, you know, shoot a bunch of arrows at them and probably get a good amount of kills. It's pretty cool, but, uh, you know, not for fighting main armies. You'd probably do something for like that for uh, backline, PD, just to harass, not really use in a main fight. Another neat thing about Ubar is their site, the Three Deserts here, has Scorching Desert, which means any unit that doesn't have Wasteland Survival entering, going in or out of this province will take two Armor Negating Fire damage. I mean, it's not the best amount of damage, but it is something. It could also, if you're lucky, put some afflictions on enemy commander. Definitely better than nothing, I think. I mean, almost all of your units are immune to it, so it's only a beneficial thing. All right, I'm gonna show you what I made for this nation. And here we are. I made a sort of all around magic Serpent King. Now the Serpent King is Dominion 1, so he's not exactly strong or scary or cool looking in any special way. He could turn into his Serpent King form, which is just kind of like a big snake, but it's not too strong or scary. But the reason I picked him is he only costs 90 points, and each new magic site only costs 10 points. Now, I took basically every type of magic except for air, and the reason for that is some of the units that I can summon uh, will have really good air, so there's, there's no point in taking on the Pretender. I could save a few points by doing that. I'm not too confident or well-versed in Glamour magic because that is new to Dominion 6, but some of the djinn and genies do have it, so I figured it's might as well good to have in the Pretender. And blood is important because Ubar does have blood magic to do. I can show you right here, level 4 and 5. He's for ghouls and ghoulas. Now, the weird thing is, Ubar does not have any recruitable blood mages at any point. You need to either take a Pretender with blood magic or... Hope you get lucky with indie mages. Obviously, I'm gonna take it on my pretender just to avoid hoping for something lucky. And then once we summon gulas, they are blood one and they can function as the blood hunters and blood casters from that point. Just need, you know, a few blood on the pretender to get your foot in the door. Now let's go to the blesses. Pretty standard stuff, attack skill, a lot of the, uh, sort of beefier gins that I'll be summoning maybe in the middle game and using it as uh, thugs. This, this will help them swing better. Uh, cold resistance. A lot of our gins and I don't know, nah, none of the humans, but a lot of them have uh, susceptible to cold. So I'm hoping this just cancels that out. Two reinvigoration to help recover from fatigue. Good for casters and thugs, basically everyone. Recuperation. Uh, really good for healing battle afflictions. I hate battle afflictions. They take some units just out of the fight, especially if like it's like a hero or something. I think it really sucks. So we're going to take this to recover from that. Heroism. Um, 50% XP I think is pretty solid. You can you know get better research on your researchers. Your commanders will have better stats. Your thugs will have better stats. And you get all this faster with more XP. Pretty solid bless, I think, just for one bless point. Now, as for my scales, I only took four candles, and I am a little bit worried about that because if uh, nations neighboring me have really strong candles, they could easily overpower me. But if I can get away with four candles, I will be pretty happy because that's a lot of points I can put elsewhere. As for the first two scales, I took Turmoil 1 and Sloth 2. I'm not too worried about recruitment points or resources. I mean, it would help in the early game when I am without the City of Brass, but once we sort of transition to the mid to late game, I'm mostly going to be probably summoning units instead of recruiting them. I'll still recruit units, obviously, but, you know, 
so there's a lot of cool units here that you can summon or I'll be summoning things like uh, elementals and uh, other junk like that next heat three obvious I mean we're comfortable in heat three we're gonna want that as hot as possible I took a growth one it's not a lot but I'm hoping it'll offset the sort of population decrease we'll get from blood hunting better than nothing now I took fortune two and the reason I did that is because the heroes for Ubar are pretty cracked they have some just incredible magic paths and uh, they're all around just a, a good thing to have and I believe the appearance of heroes is based on luck so having a good luck not only will it help us get extra gems from random events that are positive but it'll help us get our heroes earlier which I would really like and then lastly magic three we are a very magic heavy nation a lot of the gins and genies you could summon have really good magic paths. They are magic beings, ethereal. We're going to want magic high to get good research and to reduce the magic resistance of anybody in our turf. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, you can't be awake, so we are going to start dormant. Um, I was... I, I can never think about doing imprisoned because, as far as I'm aware... The City of Brass is still locked behind your Pretender, so if you do Imprisoned, you're not going to have your good units for three years, which basically, I, I don't know, if you're really good, maybe you can hang on, but someone will notice and just mow your nation over, which you don't want. So, that's what I got. It's my plan. You know, I uh, A lot of the, the magic paths being at two is sort of for... Uh, magic boosting items that's what i want to do with that at least that's the plan you know give it to a bunch of my gins to make them even stronger even greater give it to my pretender themselves so they can cast some pretty cool spells we're gonna have a good time i mean uh, depending who we're neighboring if we're neighboring someone with just like huge dominion and they're like a a rush down nation or they got a really strong bless and strong units right out the gate we might be in a hint of trouble, but there's no use worrying about that until the game actually starts. So uh, let's not think about anything like that. And the, of course, the most important part is the name I put, oh my God, is I'm stroking my snake right now. All hail. Okay, so small update. I did make a slight change here. I knocked down blood magic to two and then glamor up to three. I took a look at the item boosters and glamour booster, the, you know, the beginning one needs at least three glamour. And it seems to be kind of, you know, prevalent throughout the gins here. You see a lot of them start with one glamour with a chance of getting two glamour. I figured that might be better than having a bit one more in blood. Plus one of the heroes that we get does come with blood three I believe so we can just use them as our blood caster at that point and I think having our pretender craft a glamour booster might who knows it could open up a lot of things all right here we are Ubar turn one uh, if at any point I start to sound a little fed up it's because this is maybe the third turn one I've done so far. We've had to restart the game twice for various player reasons, but here we are, turn one. In the beginning there was chaos, up rose the Supreme God, put everyone else in check, then he disappeared, everyone's saying, hey, let's, uh, let's become the Supreme God now, and they fight each other for it. Okay, let's see here. So... Pretty small vision. We got woods, plains, plains, forest, and mountains, and another wasteland. Okay, not too bad. Uh, this guy, Rab. Let's, oops, let's rename him to. Uh, I don't have anything funny. Damn. Dab. He's gonna be our prophet for now. Uh, let's sneak over the lost land. Well, forests have good resources. Yeah, let's check out Strongdale because 
my resources are not good because of my sloth scales. Hmm. Anyway, speaking of which, uh, let's get some Brazen Guard to supplement our starting force. And some Tubbos, who are really good researchers. <coughs> Sorry if I'm a little quiet. I'm trying to move closer. Okay. So we have that. We have recruiting units. Oh, let's just go th through the tabs here, so that way I don't mess anything up. Army setup. Uh, just for now, stay behind troops. Let's have the soldiers in front of the archers. Uh, hold and fire closest. Uh, I don't know, hold and fire closest. I don't want these guys running in front of the other ones. Scout, retreat. In fact, no. I was considering putting him on retreat and then just attacking the forest, but then he'd come back to the citadel and then I, I kind of want to move him in that direction, you know? Okay. That's all done. Mercenaries, we have the shipwreckers. Hmm. Fifty two fifty-five. Uh next the let's check our research. Okay. And all rights red, but what I really want more than anything is vocation 2, and then I have true shot, which is what I want. So my plan initially is I'm going to get uh, one of these guys, my Jin Sahir, and he's got fire 2, air 2, right out the gate. So I'm going to have him lead some other Jin soldiers. I'm going to try to get him to cast True Shot to give, hopefully, him extra precision. And then I will spam Sulfur Haze. Now, it is like a toxic mist, so you might be thinking, well, you know, why would you do that and won't you kill your own units? I don't think it will, because this does 10 fire fatigue damage. Um, and as far as I know, my guys are resistant to fire. All right, sorry about that. <clears throat> Where was I? Uh, sulfur haze does fire damage, and the units I want to stick with him. He is 25 fire resist, and these Jin warriors have 25 fire resist. So theoretically, they should be immune to this completely. So I have him cast a precision spell, and then spam the sulfur haze, and that should clear out almost anything as long as my troops survive, which they should because they have glamour and unseen. As for the next spell, uh, I'm not sure. Alteration being one and a half is pretty good. I could go right for personal mist form. Or I could blast down evocation against Scorching Wind, which is really good. Anyone with Wasteland survival is immune, so that's basically my whole army. Hmm. <laughs> Construction's pretty far along. Might be able to get to three to get some better items. Conjuration being zero sucks because I like Conjuration. I mean, Conjuration three, Phoenix power, incredible. Lesser elementals, not the best, but better than nothing. Hmm. So Evo two, Alteration two. Hmm. Conjuration 2, then Conjuration 3, then Evo 4, then Construction Level 2. Okay, that's all sorted. Uh, let's take a look at the thrones in the world. Oh, the Pantocrator, a huge dominion spread, conflict bonus, call god, plus two levels per, pri per priest, pretty good. Uh, ooh, Throne of the Sun, that looks pretty nice. Growth Heat Order. Throne of Power, Astral Gems, Reinvigoration plus two, nice. Splendor, oh, gives all. Abundance, a gem of each, extra gold but sloth. Eternal Suffering, hmm. Order 
productivity and misfortune. Hate to be those guys. Throne of Elements. Obviously all the elemental gems, as well as the evocation bonus. And the Shattered Throne. Uh, so I pointed this out on one of the other turn ones, but up here it doesn't say the throne must be claimed. So I'm curious if this is just for the throne site, or if this is for the whole world. Which I certainly hope it's not for the whole world. I mean, just looking at... Well, I guess I can't see their scales yet, but we'll figure that out later. Uh, let's look at Pretenders. Makone has lots of guys. Creator of the Calendar, King of Terror. Uh, King of Terror sounds like he might have a Fear Bless. Or just Fear on the Pretender chassis. Creator of the Calendar. Hmm. Not quite sure on that one. All these names, like, you know, mean something, but I don't know all of them. Uh, King Cowhead, Master of Wisdom, a friend of Sailors, patron of Herbalists. So, a friend of Sailors might just be because he has the ability to sail on his pretender. Patron of Herbalists sounds like maybe nature, Master of Wisdom, maybe high magic skills, or maybe high research, maybe high astral, I don't know. Elf Pope. Oh boy. The Hungry Earth, the Lady Shrouded in Shadows, Protector of the Holy Mountain, Mistress of Beauty and Charm. Uh, Hungry Earth, I'm gonna guess Earth. Shadows, maybe Death. Protector of the Holy Mountain. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Beauty and Charm, maybe Glamour. Uh, there's me. Bloody Difficult. Goddess of Spring and Eternal Youth. Uh, maybe growth or an unaging bless. Creator of wine, might, metals. Hmm. Maybe yeah, I have I have no clue. I should stop guessing. Queen of metals. Maybe earth. Who knows? Grenade launcher incorporated. I like that name. King of suffering, brilliant god. Maybe blood magic and. I don't know what that one maybe fire ram says terror of the tomb warrior against the sun death and fire maybe scaly lady king of the greater earth the earth monster lord of horses uh earth most full men friend of the dead god of deformities vessel of might Sounds like death, maybe blood, vessel of might, maybe he's just strong, I don't know. They're most behind the Sons of Fire, one of the new factions. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, we got Beratos, Sitis, Zavolba, Miklan, Tiranog, Nog, however you say that, Fomoria, Kone. Um, I won't really go into what each one does in depth because I don't really care unless they're my direct neighbor that's all <laughs> that's just the truth okay so i did my research i set up my army i recruited more units bid for mercs uh there are no messages to check i could send messages but i don't know anyone nation overview nobody's in the hall of fame i showed the pretenders re my research paths all the thrones yeah i think that's pretty solid Bam. And that is it for turn one. And here we are with turn two. Uh, I'm a little more awake now than turn one. It's still the same day, just a couple hours apart. But uh, I did forget to say this in part one that I do want to say here. As I watched back some of my old Dominion stuff, I noticed I started almost every turn with saying, all right, turn whatever. Uh, I don't know if anybody cared, or people hated it, people loved it. I know that I don't like it. I think it's annoying. So I'm going to try to stop doing that. Uh, if you hear me catch myself, that's why. So anyway, let's get into this, the messages. Uh, everyone, you know, creating a prophet. Uh, Makone, big guy, the Lakos. Now the prophet of lots of guys. You know, it, well, I want to see if people name their prophets. Uh, Fomoria, Sion the Firebog, maybe, I don't know, that kind of seems like a default name. 
Uh, the elves. Brees, the fire bulb champion. Mm. Nah, that reeks of default. Ubar, that's me. Dab. <laughs> so funny. Uh, Miklan. That's a default name. Zaboba. Come on, baby, light my fire. The Zabalbin Scorpion Trainer. Uh, I like that. Zabalba's got some good names. It was worth restarting for them. Satis. Ama Ushkana. If, I, I've never played Satis, so I don't even know if that's uh, default or not. Very Toast. Polyfontes. Mm, smells like default. Muspelheim. Sure, the Muspel Hearse. Oh, his, just name is, his name is just Sure. Sure, the Muspel Hearse. Okay. Uh, and an, an event. A turn to event in Ubar. Grand Festival was held in the name of, in the honor of I'm stroking my snake right now. He who is crowned with wisdom, the rock. Everyone was celebrating and faith has increased. Dominion plus two. Hey, that's that that's that luck scale. Luck two. Okay, so Ooh, hold on. Pepper Plain, I like that. See things like uh, ghouls, I think specifically can only be recruited on wastelands. Let me see. In capital as well as all wastes. Yeah, so there's ghouls and I think spells for ghouls are only really usable in wasteland. So I would like to have another fort in a wasteland so that way I don't have to waste my, you know, capital recruitment on ghouls if I want them. Uh, so I would like to work towards it. As for Strongdale, it looks like they got 50 heavy infantries and slingers. Uh, Lost Lands is guessing about 30 Bone Tribe Hunters and Beast Hunters. We got some heavy infantries, light infantries, militias. Uh, militias, heavy infantry, light infantry, and mine men and woodsmen blowpipes. Hard to say. I mean, heavy infantries are pretty tough. I'm going to set you guys to hold and attack closest, just for those brazen guard. They don't have ranged weapons. Uh, set him to cast, although he'll just be researching. And what do I want him to do? I, could, I don't even know if preaching would work, because isn't my dominion four? Didn't I set it as the limit of four? I don't know. I don't want him attacking just yet. I want one more turn of brazen guard. Uh, tubas so I can get to work on this research yeah one tuba 16 research pretty solid what's that two will make 32 and then you know all these uh, level zero ones will only take like two turns hmm okay yeah so I guess I will just set him to preach because patrolling would be useless at zero unrest. Um, as for the scout, this is a river which is nice, the extra income. So maybe I will send him up this way. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to push that way, but it would be good to get the vision. Okay. Uh, Give me one minute to see, check my notes here, see if I forgot anything. I've been writing notes now when I when I play multiplayer games. For Well, this is the first one I'm doing it, but uh, it's good to help collect my thoughts. It just might be a little time consuming, so I'm going to pause. Give me one second. Okay. Um, sorry for these pop-ups. My pause and unpause button are hotkeys. Okay, so I think the only thing I will do here is, so I can't get another Brazen Guard. But I actually have just enough for one more bar and soldier. So I will do that for this turn. I will still recruit another Tubba. Um, once we sort of get enough soldiers that I'm confident, you know, moving them to take Strongdale, I will instead recruit uh, one of these Jinsahirs so I can get to work on my secondary uh, expedition forces. But as for that, I think there's really... Oh, Cataclysm is expected in seven years. So not all the settings were set on turn one, including the turn timer. 
So it looks like we've got uh, you know, the 24 hour turn timer and seven year cataclysm. I don't know, maybe that's around turn 90. I have no clue. But it's good to know. It's better than games drag it on for way too long. So I think I will, can I craft anything? Just follow him. Of course not, I, I don't have any gems. I've got four fire gems. Oh my, who am I kidding? But that will be the end for turn two. And here we are, Ubar, turn three. Didn't get any messages. A little weird, there's always usually something going on, but I guess it is only turn three. Now let's see. Our scout here has found Amazon and Pegasus Riders. Kind of annoying, the Pegasus Riders will just fly behind me. Hmm. So it seems to be, uh, this swamp is just called Baltimore. I thought I said Baltimore at first glance. Hmm. I'm to send my scout up this way. This for here. 32, ah, uh, drat, it's gonna take one more month for evocation. Only two RP short, ah, that's a bummer. all these units into here. Got about 29 units. Uh, I would have him cast, you know, like Divine Blessing in most circumstances, but none of these are sacred, so it would just be a waste. Let's switch him to cast spells and just a uh, Sermon of Courage, since these guys have kind of low morale. I'll at least keep them in the fight. I don't think they're ready for this yet. Maybe one more turn. Six resources. Get some ghouls. I don't even think this commander can, yeah, he can't command uh, magical beings, so they will not be a part of this force. Maybe that's just a waste. But then what the hell am I gonna spend six resources on? If I drop one and just get like two more regular soldiers. Puts me at an even zero. I'll take it. So here's what I'm thinking. Research is going to take two turns to get to Evo 1 because my research is only 32. If I take off one of my researchers, this will bump back down to 16 and still complete in two turns. So what if I craft something in that time? What do we got? Pendant of Courage, Morale plus five. Mm, not really helpful because I can only put it on my general. Fire Resistance plus 15. I don't know. I guess my Prophet doesn't have Fire Resist, but I don't really care. Uh, I can't forge this because I don't have the earth gems. The only other thing I can forge is this fire sword. She just gives them a fire sword, magic sword. I don't want him on the front line swinging, so I am not going to give him that. It's a pretty solid group of units. See, I think before I guessed that there were like 20 here, now it's 50. We're getting all sorts of wacky reports because we have no clue. But it did look like my Dominion's up by 5 due to the preaching and spread a bit to the neighboring zones, which is good. Yeah, not much more to do. I'm going to have him preach one more turn. And then next turn, once we get these units, I will, I will try to do take Strongdale. I don't really know how strong Bone Tribe Hunters are. Maybe I'll look into it before the next turn, but... I mean, 90 heavy infantries, no. This was like 50 or 60, and then the vine men. It's all kind of risky. I don't want to lose my first army on turn three. That'll really set me back. So we're going to try to play it safe, get one more turn of recruitment, throw them on my army, and then hope for the best. So that is it for turn three. Turn four, Zubar. Unexpected event. Let's see here. 
magnificent statue is raised in the honor of. I'm stroking my snake right now. He who is crowned with wisdom, the rock. Dominion plus four, order plus one. Dude, oh my god. I'm gonna take luck scales in every time I can. Well, hold on. It said order plus one. Wasn't I already turmoil one? Did that just not go through? We're in heat five. Getting spicy in here. Uh, let's see. Mountain range. 20 units, that seems like a pretty weak province. All right now. I get 34 units, 25 archers, Sermon of Courage being cast. Can we handle, I think the estimate was like 50 units here with heavy infantry and slingers. Should I maybe go for the Bone Tribe Hunters? They're probably weaker. I gotta go. I gotta believe in my boys. I mean, the morale is not the best. But, I mean, the, the Jacklins do some pretty decent damage, you know? They hit. Two damage. The Spears are 13. Uh, having infantrys, I have no clue what their health is, but it's probably not 12 or 13. Not sure what else to do this turn. Should I maybe drop the Brazen Guard and get to work on these guys? Okay. Here's what I'm gonna do. One more Tuba. Start with some of these Jin Warriors and then next turn recruit the Sahir and he'll get six Jin warriors to go with him, and ah, but it still might be like three turns till I get sulfur haze. So let's do some math here, right? Everybody's favorite math. We're getting forty-eight a month. Only two research points left for evocation one. Then I believe it's going to cost one hundred for evo two. And then that'll bump up by another 16 to, what is that like, 66? Oh, this is so embarrassing. I have a physics degree and I can't do mental math. 64, right. So that'll bump up to 64 research. But I... Does it carry over? Like, we'll, we'll have 46, 64. So we're looking at maybe two, three turns, Steve-03. Maybe I should get one more turn of Brazen Guard. Or maybe one more Tubba turn. Hard to say, let me check my notes. All right, so it looks like about six Jin warriors is pretty good to just send around with Sahirs. So here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna do one more Tuba turn. Uh, one more turn of Brazen Guard and Soldiers. And you are not going to go just yet. You are going to patrol. Just so he doesn't do anything. I can just set him to wait. It's the same deal. It's only turn four. I'm a little worried about not having scouts out there, but I think it's fine. Nobody should ex be expanding that rapidly unless they have an awake pretender, which I sure hope they don't. I'm going to play it safe. One more turn of these guys. One more Tuba. And then next turn, I'll do the Jin Warriors plus a Tuba, and then Jin Warriors plus the Sahir. And by then, I should have Evo 2. Mm, yep, that's the plan. That's it for turn 4. Turn 5 is EA Ubar. 
Research and Evocation 1 complete. Now, let's get down to brass tacks here. So I was thinking, oh, there's another wasteland over there. Hmm. So, I'm going to move to recruiting gym warriors now, but that I'm confident on. As for the Tubas, I have 64 research a month. I think I'm going to, just for this turn, stop, get some scouts, simply because I'm kind of worried not being able to see this side of the map. Uh, let's get our units. And make sure he's here. Tapas, I just want to move. Just so it's easier to organize shit later. Uh, well, almost 40 units, 25 archers. My profit. Let's go for it. Oops. Ah, uh, here we have... Hmm. Okay. Now, something else I noticed, by the way, I only noticed it later, it didn't click for me, but this area, Strong Deal, here has Heat 5, just straight up. That's hotter than my capital, so what I'm guessing is there's some sort of fire site there that increases heat. Which is very good, that's what we want. Oh, even over here, Heat 4, maybe the same deal here. Heat 2, Heat 2, Heat 3, I mean that's just normal heat spread from our Dominion, I believe. But this only has one candle, but 5 heat, I think there's something fishy going on there. Okay, so, got our recruitment. And then I'm going to recruit one of these, but I don't have the gold this turn. Get some scouts, send them south. As for research, we're going to get Evo 2 in one month. I miscalculated that a little bit, but it's no big deal. I'll get my Jinsi here next turn. And then we'll have some air forces flying out to take different provinces. Yeah, not, not too much to do here. So that is where I will end turn five.